E. Poetin Alpha, Wikipedia Audio E. Poetin Alpha slash P.O. TN slash is a human erythropoietin produced in cell culture using recombinant DNA technology. Authorized by the European Medicines Agency on August 28, 2007, it stimulates erythropoiesis and is used to treat anemia, commonly associated with chronic renal failure and cancer chemotherapy. Epoetin is manufactured and marketed by Amgen under the trade name Epigen. Johnson & Johnson subsidiary Janssen Biotech sells the same drug under the name Procrit, pursuant to a product license agreement. The average cost per patient in the U.S. was $8,447 in 2009. Darby Poetin Alpha slash DRBPTN slash is a glycosylation analog of erythropoietin containing two additional N-linked carbohydrate chains, also manufactured and marketed by Amgen, with the trade name of Arrainsp. The FDA warnings and safety precautions for Procrit, Epigen, and Arrainsp are identical. For several years, Epoetin Alpha has accounted for the single greatest drug expenditure paid by the U.S. Medicare system. In 2010, the program paid $2 billion for the drug. Raising hemoglobin levels has been found in some studies to be associated with higher risks of thrombotic events, strokes, and death. Medical Uses Erythropoietin is available as a therapeutic agent produced by recombinant DNA technology in mammalian cell culture. It is used in treating anemia resulting from chronic kidney disease and myelodysplasia from the treatment of cancer. For patients who require dialysis or have chronic kidney disease, iron should be given with erythropoietin, depending on some laboratory parameters such as ferritin and transferrin saturation. Dialysis patients in the U.S. are most often given epigen, other brands of epoetin may be used in other countries. Major Lenalidomide risk of thrombosis, moderate, cyclosporin risk of high blood pressure may be greater in combination with EPO. EPO may lead to variability in blood levels of cyclosporin, minor, ACE inhibitors may interfere with hematopoiesis by decreasing the synthesis of endogenous erythropoietin or decreasing bone marrow production of red blood cells. Erythropoietin is also used to treat anemia in people with chronic kidney disease who are not on dialysis. There are two types of erythropoietin for people with anemia due to chronic kidney disease. In March 2008, a panel of advisors for the U.S. Food and Drug Administration supported keeping erythropoiesis-stimulating agents produced by Amgen and Johnson & Johnson on the market for use in cancer patients. The FDA has focused its concern on study results from some clinical trials showing an increased risk of death and tumor growth in chemotherapy patients taking the anti-anemia drugs. Erythropoietin is used to treat people with anemia resulting from critical illness. In a randomized controlled trial, erythropoietin was shown to not change the number of blood transfusions required by critically ill patients. A surprising finding in this study was a small mortality reduction in patients receiving erythropoietin. This result was statistically significant after 29 days but not at 140 days. The mortality difference was most marked in patients admitted to the ICU for trauma. The authors provide several hypotheses for potential etiologies of this reduced mortality, but, given the known increase in thrombosis and increased benefit in trauma patients as well as marginal non-significant benefit in surgery patients, it could be speculated that some of the benefit might be secondary to the procoagulant effect of erythropoietin. Regardless, 
this study suggests further research may be necessary to see which critical care patients, if any, might benefit from administration of erythropoietin. Any benefit of erythropoietin use must be weighed against the increased likelihood of thrombosis, which has been demonstrated in numerous trials. Erythropoietin has been hypothesized to be beneficial in treating certain neurological diseases such as schizophrenia and stroke. Some research has suggested that erythropoietin improves the survival rate in children suffering from cerebral malaria, which is caused by the malaria parasite's blockage of blood vessels in the brain. However, the possibility that erythropoietin may be neuroprotective is inconsistent with the poor transport of the chemical into the brain and the low levels of erythropoietin receptors expressed on neuronal cells. Infants born early often require transfusions with red blood cells and have low levels of erythropoietin. Erythropoietin has been studied as a treatment option to reduce anemia in preterm infants. Treating infants less than 8 days with erythropoietin old may slightly reduce the need for red blood cell transfusions, but increases the risk of retinopathy. Due to the limited clinical benefit and increased risk of retinopathy, early or late erythropoietin treatment is not recommended for preterm infants. As of March, 2018, Dr. Sandra E. Jewell, M.D., Ph.D., Chief of Neonatology and Professor of Pediatrics at Seattle Children's Hospital, continues to conduct studies focusing on the neuroprotective effects of erythropoietin in neonatal models of brain injury. According to her Seattle Children's Hospital profile, she is the principal investigator of the PANET trial a large multi-center trial to test whether EPO improves the outcome of extremely preterm infants. As of January 23, 2015, 346 patients had been enrolled. The PANET trial will enroll a total of 940 infants born between 24 and 28 weeks gestation at 18 centers across the United States. Seattle Children's Hospital Profile and Biography, http colon slash slash www.seattlechildrens.org slash medical hyphen staff slash Sandra hyphen e hyphen jewel semicolon Seattle Children's Hospital Article, Inquiry in Action, Protecting Preemies Brains, Will High Dose Erythropoietin Protect Extremely Premature Babies from Brain Injury? HTTP colon slash slash www.seattlechildrens.org slash healthcare hyphen professionals slash AAR hyphen 2014 slash inquiry hyphen in hyphen action slash protecting preemies brains. Epoetin alpha is generally well tolerated. Common side effects include high blood pressure, headache, disabling cluster migraine, joint pain, and clotting at the injection site. Rare cases of stinging at the injection site, skin rash, and flu-like symptoms have occurred within a few hours following administration. More serious side effects, including allergic reactions, seizures, and thrombotic events rarely occur. Chronic self-administration of the drug has been shown to cause increases in blood hemoglobin and hematocrit to abnormally high levels, resulting in dyspnea and abdominal pain. Anemia caused by chronic kidney disease Erythropoietin is associated with an increased risk of adverse cardiovascular complications in patients with kidney disease if it is used to target an increase of hemoglobin levels above 13.0 g/dl. Early treatment with erythropoietin correlated with an increase in the risk of retinopathy of prematurity in premature and anemic infants raising concern that the angiogenic actions of erythropoietin may exacerbate retinopathy. Since anemia itself increases the risk of retinopathy, the correlation with erythropoietin treatment may be incidental. As of March, 
2018, Dr. Sandra E. Jewell, M.D., Ph.D., Chief of Neonatology and Professor of Pediatrics at Seattle Children's Hospital, continues to conduct studies focusing on the neuroprotective effects of erythropoietin in neonatal models of brain injury. According to her Seattle Children's Hospital profile, she is the principal investigator of the PANET trial, a large multi-center trial to test whether EPO improves the outcome of extremely preterm infants. As of January 23, 2015, 346 patients had been enrolled. The PANET trial will enroll a total of 940 infants born between 24 and 28 weeks gestation at 18 centers across the United States. Seattle Children's Hospital Profile and Biography HTTP colon slash slash www.seattlechildrens.org slash medical hyphen staff slash Sandra hyphen e hyphen jewel semicolon Seattle Children's Hospital article, Inquiry in Action, Protecting Premies Brains, Will High Dose Erythropoietin Protect Extremely Premature Babies from Brain Injury? HTTP colon slash slash www.seattlechildrens.org slash healthcare hyphen professionals slash AAR hyphen 2014 slash inquiry hyphen in hyphen action slash protecting preemies brains. Amgen sent a Dear Doctor letter in January 2007 that highlighted results from a recent anemia of cancer trial and warned doctors to consider use in that off-label indication with caution. Amgen advised the U.S. Food and Drug Administration regarding the results of the Dehancaten clinical trial. The Dehancaten Data Monitoring Committee found that three-year loco-regional cancer control in subjects treated with ARANSP was significantly worse than for those not receiving ARANSP. In response to these advisories, the FDA released a public health advisory on March 9, 2007, and a clinical alert for doctors on February 16, 2007, about the use of erythropoiesis stimulating agents such as epigen and darbipoidin. The advisory recommended caution in using these agents in cancer patients receiving chemotherapy or off chemotherapy and indicated a lack of clinical evidence to support improvements in quality of life or transfusion requirements in these settings. In addition, on March 9, 2007, drug manufacturers agreed to new black box warnings about the safety of these drugs. On March 22, 2007, a congressional inquiry into the safety of erythropoietic growth factors was reported in the news media. Manufacturers were asked to suspend drug rebate programs for physicians and to also suspend marketing the drugs to patients. Anemia caused by cancer Anemia in critically ill patients Several publications and FDA communications have increased the level of concern related to adverse effects of ESA therapy in selected groups. In a revised black box warning, the FDA notes significant risks, advising that ESAs should be used only in patients with cancer when treating anemia specifically caused by chemotherapy, and not for other causes of anemia. Further. The warning states that ESAs should be discontinued once the patient's chemotherapy course has been completed. Neurological Diseases Preterm Infants Adverse Effects Safety Advisories in Anemic Cancer Patients Interactions Drug interactions with erythropoietin include the Ortho Pharmaceutical Corporation vs. Amgen, Inc. On September 30, 1985, Johnson & Johnson's wholly owned subsidiary Ortho Pharmaceutical Corporation and Amgen, Inc., 
entered into a product license agreement which provided for the promotion, marketing, and sale of Epoidin Alpha, under the name of Procrit by Ortho and Epigen by Amgen. The agreement provided for secret arbitrations to resolve differences and since early 1989 these arbitrations were conducted under the auspices of Jam Slash N Dispute, a private company. This product license agreement resulted in some of the most massive litigation in the history of the United States. The relationship between Ortho and Amgen deteriorated substantially almost immediately. At the heart of the relationship was the contractual limitation of Amgen to sell to the dialysis market and ortho to the rest of the Epoidin Alpha market. Alleging breaches of the product license agreement, on August 31, 1995, Amgen sought termination of the contract because of ortho's illegal breaches and also sought price erosion damages forced by ortho's illegal competition. Procrit was Johnson & Johnson's most profitable product. For several years, Epoidin Alpha has accounted for the single greatest drug expenditure paid by the United States Medicare system, in 2010, it was $2 billion. Litigation and Arbitration This secret jam slash and dispute arbitration lasted for over seven years with the final hearing in the case lasting five months. Mark Duxbury, a former Procrit salesperson for Ortho and a key witness for Amgen, was deposed three times and testified for two days at the final hearing. He estimated that 10 to 20 million pages of documents had been produced and that over 100 attorneys were in the room when he testified. He was informed that a similar number of attorneys were present during each day of the five-month final hearing. At the close of the final hearing in the secret arbitration, the attorneys for Ortho stated in a written closing argument as follows. 3. Amgen's conspiracy theory is contrary to the sworn testimony of Ortho executives. Amgen asks your honor to reject virtually in whole, the testimony of ortho executives as perjury. Executive after executive from ortho testified about the reasons why the company implemented the programs it did, its analysis of its marketing opportunities and its efforts to limit dialysis sales. If this testimony is true, the Amgen's case utterly fails. In that event, the documented handful of FSDC sales reflects no more, and no less, than this reality, they were simply an incidental and unintended byproduct of Ortho's efforts to obtain its legitimate market. Thus, Amgen is forced to take an extraordinary litigation position. It must argue, as it has, that every senior member of Ortho's management has secretly conspired to breach the product license agreement and to lie about it when questioned under oath. This gopher broke strategy collapses under the weight of its utter implausibility. On October 18, 2002, arbitrator Frank J. Magar, retired federal judge, decided the case in favor of Amgen and awarded $150 million in damages and later ordered another $150 million to Amgen for attorney fees. In his memorandum opinion and order dated October 18, 2002, arbitrator Magar made the following findings. Controversy Amgen has set forth the conduct of Ortho in breach of the product license agreement, not only by errant sales representatives, but also with the knowledge of and tacit approval of some Ortho executives. The evidence demonstrates such conduct, and Ortho executives testify, some not convincingly, that they had no knowledge. Ortho knew or should have known what its sales reps were doing and all the evidence demonstrates the inadequacy of its controls, Amgen's evidence of sales reps' misconduct was compelling. 
And equally compelling is the evidence that ortho management knew what was going on, ortho's illegal conduct was aggressive and brazen, and Amgen's sensitivity to its competition was understandable. Medicare fraud and criminal guilty plea in the promotion, marketing, and sale of arraigns from 2004 through 2011, 10 civil actions were commenced by whistleblowers under the provisions of the False Claims Act, 11 U.S.C. Sector 3729, against Amgen, Inc. alleging that it caused false claims to be submitted to Medicare, Medicaid, and other government insurance programs. The False Claims Act allows private citizens to bring civil actions on behalf of the United States and share in the recovery. It is the primary way the United States recovers damages for fraud. Despite this important public purpose, and the fact that whistleblowers often make tremendous personal and professional sacrifices to bring their claims, the federal courts have come up with the derogatory term of parasitic to describe some categories of unsuccessful claimants. If the Department of Justice determines that the case is meritorious, the government is allowed to intervene in the case and take it over from the private litigants. The Department of Justice did so and, on December 19, 2012, a settlement was reached between the Department of Justice and Amgen, Inc. whereby Amgen pled guilty to the crime of illegally introducing drug into market for uses that the FDA declined to approve and agreed to pay $762 million to resolve its criminal liability and the False Claims Act allegations against it. The settlement represented the single largest criminal and civil false claims act settlement involving a biotechnology company in U.S. history. All ten claimants shared in the reward. The DOJ's criminal information alleged the following, beginning at the launch of Arrainsp in 2002 and extending until 2007. Amgen allegedly introduced Arrains for uses and at doses levels that the FDA had specifically declined to approve due to insufficient clinical evidence to establish their safety and efficacy. In particular, Amgen illegally introduced Arrains into the oncology and nephrology ESA markets, intending that it be used for patients suffering from anemia due to chronic kidney disease or chemotherapy at off-label unapproved doses that were larger and less frequently administered than those approved by the FDA for these patient populations. Amgen also illegally introduced Arrainsp into the oncology ESA market intending that it be used to treat anemia caused by cancer, irrespective of whether the patient had been prescribed chemotherapy a use which the FDA had never approved and which the FDA subsequently determined caused an increased risk of death. In particular, in 2007, the FDA mandated that a black box label be added to Arrainsp's label, warning that Arrainsp increased the risk of death in patients with active malignant disease receiving neither chemotherapy nor radiation. At approximately the time that the FDA issued the black box warning, Amgen ceased its promotion of Arrains for the treatment of anemia caused by cancer rather than the cancer's treatment. Amgen's internal sales and marketing materials made plain that Amgen's misbranding of Arrains was the company's core business strategy to gain market share from its only ESA competitor, Procrit, sold by Johnson & Johnson. At the time of Arrainsp's 2002 launch, doctors typically prescribed Procrit to treat the anemic patient populations for which Arrainsp was approved. To compete with Procrit, Amgen built the Arrainsp commercial strategy around the unapproved, off-label approach of a less frequent dosing schedule, which Amgen sales representatives argued was more convenient for patients and more profitable for doctors. Amgen implemented this illegal commercial effort through its promotion of off-label doses from two to four times larger than those approved by the FDA, 
administered far less frequently than approved by the FDA. The civil settlement contained similar allegations and further that Amgen used journal articles that were insufficient to support the safety and efficacy of the off-label uses at issue, and improperly obtained listings in medical compendia in an effort to establish that the off-label uses were medically accepted, and thereby eligible for coverage by federal health care programs. The publication of an editorial questioning the benefits of high-dose epoetin was cancelled by the marketing branch of a journal after being accepted by the editorial branch highlighting concerns of conflict of interest in publishing. In 2011, author Kathleen Sharp published a book, Blood Feud, The Man Who Blew the Whistle on One of the Deadliest Prescription Drugs Ever alleging drug maker Johnson & Johnson encouraged doctors to prescribe epoetin in high doses, particularly for cancer patients, because this would increase sales by hundreds of millions of dollars. Former sales representatives Mark Duxbury and Dean McClellan, claim that the bulk of their business selling epoetin to hospitals and clinics was Medicare fraud, totaling $3 billion. In a lawsuit, Duxbury alleged his employer wrongfully terminated him in 1998. He lived in Gig Harbor, Washington. He was born on March 23, 1960 and died on Tuesday, October 13, 2009, at age 49, while his case was still in litigation.